Welcome to Chamber Chat. Today, I have Code Enforcement Officer, right? That's correct. Josh Morris with me. And Josh is here to talk about this position that we haven't had a Code Enforcement Officer for how long? It's been a while now. It's yeah. really the first ever as far as a police as far officer. As a police officer. Right. Before, it's been someone within the city, off, as far as the city government Correct. job within the office there. I think it was a civil service job at one time, too. That's true. So, but you've been, before we get a whole lot into this, I want to find out more about you. You've, how long have you been a police officer? I've Josh? been with the Silicon Police Department uh, three years now. Okay. And uh, was on patrol on nights and uh, recently been moved to this position in uh, September. In September of this year you started in this position? That's correct. Okay. And you've been to the academy and all that stuff? That's correct. I'm that a certified police do. officer. Okay. All right. And um, um, when you, how did, you told me, I think, that you, you report directly to Chief Carden, correct? That's correct. That's, uh, I answered Chief Carden. I'm still a police officer, just assigned to the ordinance yeah. position. Code enforcement. And I was looking over the um, the original, the job description that they gave out for this, and it's uh, um, what your job duties are, what she's supposed to be enforcing are junk and abandoned vehicles. Correct. Litter. That's, is that like people throwing stuff? It is uh, on the roadways, also in their yards. You know, a lot yeah. of times they have cans. Yeah. Um, just yeah. anything that makes your yard look, look poor mm -hmm. is kind of what we're looking to address. Now this part of the of the uh, the job description I liked, it's public education, talking about awareness of the laws and and what you know what exactly the public needs to be educated because this is a it's a very precarious position I, th I feel like that you're in because we haven't had anybody that right. was an actual police officer in this position before. It is unique. Um, a lot of the cities are going to it, mm -hmm. some of our neighboring cities. Um, it's way that you know police officers out in in the public, and he you know is familiar with everybody, so he can communicate with them as far as stuff like that right. goes. Right, so. and when you were on patrol, I mean, you saw a lot of the things that, that now you're being asked to to uh, to handle. Right, and that that's helpful. Yeah, you know, I think it help, helps having an officer like that knows how to communicate with the with the public. Now there are hundreds <laughs> of ordinances. They really are. But the ones that seem to be addressed the most, I think, uh, probably under what they want you to do, is is the noise ordinance. Which, which correct me if I'm wrong, but the noise ordinance has probably been one of the few ordinances that really kind of has been enforced to some degree by patrol officers all these years. That's correct. It's uh, you know, stopping on a vehicle for anything outside of 25 feet on mm -hmm. a vehicle is a stop and a citation is issued. Now as far as the, a vehicle and the noise, what, how do you measure that? How do you decide it's what? It's in feet. Um, some, some cities do it in decibels. They actually have a, a gauge that they do it. Uh -huh. We do it by feet, uh, 25 feet. 25 and feet from? From the officer. From the officer. So if they view a vehicle approaching, it's also from a residence as well. Okay. So if somebody's right. like a house party or something like that, uh -huh. generally we answer those off of a a complaint mm -hmm. generally, but if the officer hears <laughs> yeah. it, they can address it too. Okay. So. okay. But generally, it's soft complaints. And and that's something that I think when we talked earlier, you were saying that the uh, the as patrolmen, you were handling those, or have been handling those, but the paperwork was massive. It, it took <laughs> a little know? while, and uh, as far as the safety way to go with it, we changed the form. So it's a little easier to fill out for the officer. And that's what you've done since you've been in this position. I did. You know. I, I, something I thought was important. Mm -hmm. It's good officer safety to change it so it's uh, just quicker on the stops. That's good. So. That, that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. They've also got down on this on this um, job description that uh, like you said you're supposed to be updating the current ordinances mm -hmm. and, and, and ordinance preparation. Maybe there's there's something that not addressed in what we have in place now or needs to be up. I think the biggest thing would be updating. It is. That's That's mainly Probably the first month I was there, that's what I, I did most days, is study the ordinances, um, compare them to other cities nearby, um, see what stuff we can take from those and try to improve our ordinances. Right. I think you also shared with me that you visited, I think it was Anniston, you I said? I did. I went up to Anniston. Uh, police department spent a day up there with their ordinance enforcement. Um, it was very helpful to mm -hmm. see how they operate. They've been doing it a little bit longer. 
um, and been very successful with it. Well, so. kind of speak to that. And they have an officer who's who does that they, too for them, and they do. and kind of speak a little bit about what's how they handle this. Right. We have she's over it. Um, Tana Bryant up at Aniston. Um, she has two officers underneath her. Oh, okay. That she's able. So their workload is has built that much that yeah, they can, yeah. they can do that. She's actually the vice president of the ordinance association. So they have an association. It does. Wow. And they meet in Chicago yearly. It's huh. A, it's a function they have up there, so it was very helpful to, for her to help help us out. Yeah, give us a lot of good information. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm, that that really does help to, to look at other cities around us because Anderson is, you know, bigger than Sylacauga, but not not right. too out of you know right. out, of, out of the realm. Now, public speaking. This is. It says public. Here speaking. we are. <laughs> We're public speaking, and uh, I think that's very important because I think the more educated the, the public is as to what you're out there doing That's the less the less uh, um, um, they're going to be you know either fearful or don't want to comply or, or right. whatever else with that and uh, it also says as far as what they would like for you to do you're a certified law enforcement officer That's correct. which is mandatory for this and uh, um, uh, how did anybody else interview besides yourself for this, or were you? There were several candidates to put in for it. Yeah, because um, it was posted within the department. It was posted. Uh, we interviewed, selected by by a chief and mayor was also in there. So. Okay. And just uh, just kind of went over what they were looking the job to be, and and it will grow from there. You know, it could be some other duties added to it as time goes by, but that's right. generally right. The starting duties. It. Um which of the ordinances you know, that that are in place now do you feel have been, besides the, the noise ordinance, have been addressed fairly consistently, or if they haven't been, or you know, what? Where are we with that? Do you, do you feel like? And it's a process um, to try to get them changed over to where you can actually do something, do some enforcement with it, right? Because um, it's been some time for some of the ordinances. A lot of them were written way back in. You know, the 30s oh, and the Oh yeah, 40s I was looking at in that, where is it, the one about the, which is basically a, a, a loitering ordinance, but it's more or less, when you read the ordinance that was written in 1931, it's a curfew ordinance. It pretty basically, much is. Uh, it truly correct. is. So how, it's, it's, right now with the ordinance, I know they've been working on an animal control ordinance. Correct. That kind of a thing too. Does that fall under you too also? It's as separate far as helping division, to but I can I can assist with Michelle. Force it, right? Yes. Michelle, I think, has done a fine job in that position. She's very good. She's very that. qualified. For yeah, that. she yeah. truly, truly is. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you start looking at when you've been looking through these ordinances and and making some changes that need to be made, does that have to be approved by the city council, or does does the chief approve that, or can you pretty much, you know, show them what you're doing and not have to wait for the approval of the council and for a vote and everything? It has to be approved um, through the council. Um, okay. Mainly what I do is try to look at the ordinances in place, revise them, um, take them to the city attorney, and he'll look, up, look over them and make sure that they comply with state law. Sure. That sure. way, you know, before the council even looks at them. Yeah. Because we'll that protects that point, everybody. That's correct. That protects and we everybody. we want to make sure it's, it's by the law before we start enforcement. So. Um, and right, you know, you were talking about, let me see here, I'm going to get my stuff straight here because I got so many questions, I get, I get off track. As far as um, weeds and trash and grass and that whole area, mm -hmm. I was looking through that and I think the way it stands now, it's, is it 12 inches? Is that correct? The way our ordinance is written, it's just, it's declared as a nuisance um, by the officer. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to have it changed a little bit where it's worded, you know, stipulating exactly what yeah. we yeah. were requiring from the citizens. Because the original really doesn't address. It's not specific no. like we'd want it to be. Yep. That way we ever want to know the height that needs to be at right. and how the yard needs to look. I mean, it's pretty much, I, I'm looking at what you had started as far as um, rewriting that and it's, it's much more condensed than this three page yeah. You know, and but it but it is a lot clearer. Yeah, that's the way I, I thought it would work best. Is so there's no in between. Mm -hmm. You would know kind of what we need, we expect. Yeah. And, you know, a certain standard we're looking to go with it. Yeah. And then that way there's no in between. On. And and when Livingston being the city attorney, mm -hmm. he's he's looking this stuff over for you now. He is. Uh, he gets with the municipalities down in Montgomery, 
and to make sure that it matches up with what they have available mm -hmm. and make sure that it it would work. Within the we, law. Right. Within the law. Yeah. <laughs> Has we to be within to the law. <laughs> have to be within the law. Were there, when you were looking through some of these ordinances that are in place, were there any that, that really you didn't feel needed to be messed with at all? Well, there's so many, you know, <laughs> that you could pick from, but what I mainly wanted to do is pick the ones that would help the city the quickest. Right. As far as you get the, the most city get up to a standard. Right. Um, that way, you know, maybe more businesses coming into town. Yeah, because if yeah. you uh, if you concentrate on the the weeds and the and the and the abatement of of old cars and right. that kind of thing and and uh, and and noise, yeah, you can that makes a big impact and that's what's visible, like you said, sure. to uh, to people coming through our city. We just want a better quality of life. Uh, for the citizens to draw people back to Silicon Sure, That's sure. That's what our plan is. Sure. So. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, I think, right now. Okay. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit with, with Josh about uh, um, where the folks should be able to see what's happened already. And also, I want to know what his vision is for the future of this position and how he'd like to see it, it grow and, and, and make it more user-friendly for all of us. So stay with me. You've waited all year for this sale. Toyota Thon is on right now. And it's the Toyota of Silicaga Grand Reopening. You can get our lowest prices of the year today. We are your Silicaga RAV4 connection. Right now, all new RAV4s are discounted up to $4,000. Zero percent financing available. Don't miss this one. Toyota Thon and the Toyota of Silicaga Grand Reopening. Online 24 7 at toyotaofsilicaga.com. Folks, the Family Perfect Home is available right now in Birmingham, and it can be yours for, seriously, a very, very affordable price. Four to five bedrooms, fully finished basement, three baths, two-car garage, and yes, gorgeous pool. Can you see your family poolside this spring? Family Perfect in the Vestavia School System, tops in the state. Family Perfect on a cul-de-sac. Family Perfect at 205-249-0273. Call Dana. It's a lot more affordable than you might think. <laughs> Cardin's Gift Cottage. Shop them early and shop them late. Shop Cardin's early for the area's best selection of great holiday decorations. Inside or outside, your home will look like a winter wonderland. And right up to the last minute, Cardin's has the most unique Christmas gift ideas you'll find. On second thought, don't shop them too late. You just might miss what you've been looking for at Cardin's Gift Cottage, West Fort Williams in Silicaga. <laughs> You've waited all year for this sale. Toyota Thon is on right now, and it's the Toyota of Silicaga Grand Reopening. You can get our lowest prices of the year today. We are your Silicaga Tundra connection. Right now, all new Tundras are discounted up to $6,000. All discounts clearly marked on vehicles. Don't miss this one. Toyota Thon and the Toyota of Silicaga Grand Reopening. Online 24 7 at toyotaofsilicaga.com. Any meal, any time, it's a Huddle House on Highway 280. From the popular Huddle House signature waffle to our big house breakfast, including gravy and biscuit and loaded hash browns, it's a Huddle House. Try our Philly cheese steak omelet, it's a sure hit too. Our big house sandwich combos include Huddle Burger and country fried steak. And for lunch or dinner, it's the often requested chop steak with mushroom gravy. Starting to get hungry? Head to the Huddle House. Our friendly and experienced team await you. Huddle House, Highway 280, any meal, any time. We're back now. And Josh, I wanted to, to talk a, a little bit about this website you told me to go to this morning because I, I looked mm -hmm. at it and it's uh, municode.com. And, and I think they're going to try to put that on the screen for you so you can okay. see it too. And uh, it's up there now. And uh, uh, when you go to that w a website, you can click on Alabama and then click on Silicaga, and you can Correct. take a look at all the different ordinances that are in yeah. place now. It's, right. it's very, I could spend a lot of time there, I think. It's very neat. I mean, a lot of times you'd, you'd be surprised what, you know, ordinance is in place on. Yeah, yeah, it's, we, we it's talked about too. that earlier. There, it helps to really be able to go there and see you know, either how far we've come or how far we haven't come right. as far as where we are with, with code enforcement and, and the, different, the different ordinances that are out there. Now, talk to me a little bit about, you said you went to Anniston mm -hmm. and did some research. Correct. Where else in the surrounding areas have you gone to kind of talk to those people or look at what they're doing too? Right, now, mainly the research. Uh, Anniston's the main place that I've went and spent uh -huh. the day at, um, but I've looked at other cities where 
they're equal in size, kind of looking at what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, updated their website online, uh -huh. and able to look at the, the current stuff that they've changed. Okay. So. And you looked, did you tell me, what did you look at Alexander City, I think I you did. said? I Al did, Alexander City, Auburn, Tuscaloosa, Auburn. Um, some of the larger cities, but try to maybe steal some stuff that they do that, yeah. that may be helpful for us. Yeah, because I think what uh, what you mentioned and what I've noticed on some of them I've looked at is, it is a lot of those ordinances for as far as uh, new grass and weeds and stuff. You got to put a little teeth in them as far as you know. You don't just smack their hand and put a sign up in the yard and tell them they got to fix it. You got to find them. Yeah, you sometimes know? you know we hope we hope for compliance is the ultimate thing because we just want them to fix the the property and mm -hmm. make it look better. You know, right now. And Silicaga, that process is is a lengthy one. It, it takes a while to get it to the point as far as um, the way the current or ordinance is written. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to get it where we can kind of run it like the noise ordinance through court. You know, if it ends up in a fine, uh, it could run through the court process and it would work. The same a way. Better. It would. It yeah. Would work the same way. What kind of what kind of fines do you think should be on those? On for the grass and weeds. And We've looked at different ones. Um, Alexander City had a $75 fine um, after for the, the warning for yeah. the first offense, uh -huh. and then it would progress from there. Um, you know, larger cities have a much larger fine. You know, it's around $700. So we want to do and something. That was that's, in Tuscaloosa, that's, I think you that's said. That's correct. And they don't give you any warning. They show up with a ticket, <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to be that way. We no, want compliance. Don't and, want to uh, have to do that, but but still, right. I guess that's a. Uh, that would certainly get my attention. It would me too. And uh, we don't want to do that. We want to be fair and uh, educate the public. And, you know, 90% of the folks, you know, want their place to look nice. Well, it's, sure. It's a small minority. And it's not just people's yards at their homes. That's it's, it's their businesses. It's their too. businesses. You know, it's the way they make money. That's it. Also. Yeah. So. You've got to, it's got to look appealing for folks who want to, you know, want to come to in and business. shop with you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's something that, that uh, most of our business folks in town are really, are really, uh, Really good about they really about uh, keeping up with that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. they do. They do a really good job. They, they truly just, do. They really do. So, um, you've been in the job for okay, October three, four months. That's correct. Four months. Mm -hmm. Four months. Four months. Do you feel like what? What's the biggest change that you think you've been able to to uh, to implement in the short period of time you've been in this position? Right. I mean, some of the residents, you know, they're not familiar with the ordinances. If we saw something riding me around, you mm -hmm. know, it looked bad, we would get out and tell them, and, and most times it would be a surprise to them, but they mm -hmm. would correct it. You know, you go by two or three days later, and it's gone, and it's been took care of. Huh. So, and that's really what we want. You sure, know. that's exactly what you want. You know, just take pride in their, their property and their business. Okay. What yeah. about abandoned properties and things like that? Folks that, you know, uh, uh, owners, there's so many owners that, that don't even live here, in yeah, the, or in the state for that And matter. that is a challenge, you know, if a property goes into foreclose and the state owns it, it's a big research job to figure out who owns it and then try to, to get in contact with someone that can help you mm -hmm. as far as that. So that's, that's probably the toughest part. Yeah. Um, and that's what we run into on several properties. It's doing your research. Correct. And that's just a matter of just sitting down at a computer or whatever right. else and just run it back until you can get some kind of a, right. a path for it. it truly yeah. is. So. You see yourself in this position for the next two or three years, probably. Yeah, that's the that's the plan. That's, that's the plan. That. Okay. That's kind of the assignment, you know, a year to two years, um, and see how it grows from there. That mm -hmm. position. So. so what what uh, what what's your long range vision for your for for not just for yourself but for this position? What well, you know? What would you like to see implemented and changed so that it's 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 more user friendly for everybody. Right. Yeah, I mean we just want to be able to prove it where it's it's not complicated, you know, word it in a way that everyone can understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, be be fair, be easy to deal with on it. Um, mm -hmm. but be able to get some change too cuz I know everybody, you know, wants more business in the town and sure. more jobs and I think the best way to do that is to have a the clean town, you mm -hmm. know, a presentable town for business owners. Right. When you bring them in that, you know, we don't have to sell our city; it'll sell itself. Sure, so. certainly. Heck yes. Um, as far as as uh, um, implementing these new things, do you are you do you lean more toward the you know you give them a warning and then you go talk to them a little bit more and then right. I mean how how far do you 
let that go before you have to put your foot down and say, look. Yeah, sometimes it, it, it takes a ticket, you know, yeah. sometimes for some folks. But, you know, like the majority will comply. You know, you give them a warning and they understand that we're trying to prove the city. Uh, I think more people would go along with that. Have you had much resistance thus far as far as talking to folks? Because you're looking at different ordinances on, on things that, that have they've just let slip by and not paid attention to for so long right. that you know I can hear in my in my in my mind just the comebacks as far as well you know what do you care now for right they look you know? at you a little strange but then <laughs> they think well that sounds like a good idea you know I, I see your point so yeah so they they comply pretty for the much most part. so much mm -hmm. so how much actually out there and doing that kind of thing have you have you had to do, have you been doing yeah about a month you know just really about couple, a month on the street right because. Familiarizing myself with the ordinances mm -hmm. to kind of know what, you know, how to communicate with them about it, to educate them with it. Now, if you're out there, if you're out there, and and you're talking to someone about, let's just say they have a lot of weeds and trash and whatever else mm -hmm. on their property, and you and you quote this ordinance, uh, you have a copy of that with you so you can. Show I always it to them. take it with them. That's good. I really do. That's excellent. Yeah, because, that way I can just I mean, that's the first show thing it I, to them. I know, can first thing, like, I, you know, can I see a copy of that? Show me where it right, says I, I have to do this. I would appreciate that. Well, know? sure, right. yeah. And I, I think once you show someone, you know, well, here's, this is what it says. Right, you now know? you know, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's truly the way it should work anyway. Anyway, so I want to talk about more, I want you to get more in depth about your vision for that for this position. Right. I mean, Tell me more about what you, you know, really want to see changed. It works out of the mayor's office. Right. So you're able to communicate with the mayor about what you like, you know, put your input on stuff, and he'll share what he'd like to see changed. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of communicating with them, um, be able to get with the, with the council. And what's they the mayor's main, main focus right now? What would he, what's he, he wanting to big concentrate? On litter. He, okay. He'd like to see litter. You know, that's, and that's important, too. You know, people yeah. ride on our roadways. Oh, it definitely is. It's, uh, it can... If it's really clean, you know, it, that shines good on the yeah. city. Yeah, well, so. that and, and and I have seen people driving down the driving down Broadway, right, and throw stuff out the window. Yeah, it's uh, we want to. You kind of want to <laughs> tour that. Yeah, <laughs> stop them right there. Right. You know? But uh, what you know, it's as far as the ordinances go. What? Let's talk. I'm going to talk about this 1931. <laughs> Basic curfew, or that's right. a basic loitering curfew ordinance. That's correct. What, uh, it's, it's, I mean, there's a, the, you had figured the, the fine on that at the time it was written was $25? $25 in 1931. In 1931. Right. Which, which you calculated that today to be about, what, 380 something dollars? Right. For the, for the same offense? That's right. And that's just, uh, I mean, the way this thing reads in its, in the, in the simplest form is, there shouldn't be anybody on the streets after after 11 o'clock. Right, to daylight is how yeah, the, the original daylight. ordinance is written. From 11 o'clock at night till daylight. Right. And with that depends on what time of year it is, too. That's you true. Know, it's it's like, right now, it'd be 7, 8 o'clock in the morning before it's daylight That's true. Some, sometimes. But uh, so, did you, you think this needs to be changed? I think the uh, you think maybe just a little bit? <laughs> a little bit probably would help. Um, we don't have a big problem with that. We're running into some issues mm -hmm. at times where it would be good. To have a short form for mm -hmm. loitering, um, so it's normally issue one or two of those tickets, and mm -hmm. they would know that. You what know. about these kids at the park? Yeah, we have a nine o'clock curfew park. at the park. At Noble Park, right? right. And that's nine o'clock standard. Uh, just can't be in the park. So. Right, right. So, and, and patrol officers are. Uh, and that's patrol officers that's enforce, they that. enforce that. That's Because right. your job is mostly daylight hours, right? Eight to, eight to five. five, and um, pretty much just trying to address the the basic stuff right. as far as cleaning the city. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, I think you can probably do a whole lot in, in your position as far as public education going to the schools, wouldn't you, th right. wouldn't you think so? Right, and that's something they're, they're looking to do. Yeah. Is going with the schools, educating the, and the kids on, on litter. Because you get these, to start them early on. That's it. right. You yeah. get these kids in the third, fourth, and fifth grade and you talk about, you know, their yard's not looking good and litter and weeds and stuff and, and they're going to put pressure maybe on mom and dad you hope so. to make it yeah. look a little bit better. That's right. There. That's right. That's that's the way it should work anyway. Now let's see what else I want to talk to you about here. This the sign ordinance is something that that it's pretty well 
established and pretty right. much, and I know it's been revised and looked at and, and gone over again, but that's something that uh, is a, uh, only pertains to like when you have those those lighted signs at your business that the would mobile. block mm -hmm. the roadways. Right, you can't have any signage on the right of way. Right, uh, five feet off the roadway. Uh, it's, it's attractive for some folks, and, and a lot of people say it looks bad too. Well, so. oh, yeah, it, yeah, it does. And if it's flashing, yeah, and it's that close to the roadway, right. so it's attracting, definitely. It's just it's not safe. So you've been you spent the first two months of your job basically looking at all of this stuff. A lot of research. It really was. A lot of research and there's probably a lot more to go. Mm -hmm. and, and and I just find it interesting that, that really when I looked at these, the officers for many years you know, were taking care of all of this stuff. Right. So <laughs> it was tough, you know, and the city council and the mayor pushed for just having an officer to concentrate on that because mm -hmm. they want to be able to change all those ordinances. So it's it took a lot of pressure off some off of people. Them. Right. Yeah. So. And city council, I, I, I'm sure. Uh, are get enough phone calls at home at night. I'm sure they do. More stuff. than they would probably care for. Uh, the That's time, right. So. <laughs> not not to have to take care of this stuff too. Right. And you've been able to kind of alleviate some of that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, pressure on on them too. So where do you see yourself maybe in five or six years from now in on in the force? It could be uh you know maybe a sergeant's test or something like that. There you By go. that time, you know, yeah. I'd like to move up in the department. Um, that's my police officer at heart. You know, yeah, talking, yeah. So. I think I was, I was going to ask you that. I know, I know that you were on night patrol and stuff. Right. You said, and so now you're not. You know, and right. As uh, as uh, romantic as that may sound, to be on <laughs> night patrol or whatever else. Yeah, I, I was. Blessed. That's kind of an adjustment. It was. I mean, I was blessed to come off a really good shift. Uh -huh. A lot of good guys on that shift that that did a good job. So yeah, I miss working with those those guys, mm -hmm. but. It's just a new challenge for me, and it's a career development position as well. Truly is. It, it truly so. is a career development development so maybe position help me for down you. Down the road. You know, That's right. The plan. Always will. That's right. Always should be. It really should. So I think, Josh, is there anything else you want to tell the folks out there before we get off of here today? Uh, as just, far as what yeah. you'd like to see them help you out, or how they can make your job easier and right. make it easier on themselves. Right. I mean, it's pretty much something on your property. You know, just look at. You know, you kind of know what looks bad. You sure. Know, maybe something's you laying should. out in your yard. You should, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just it's kind of a common sense thing. You know, if there's a pile of trash, maybe we should get that up. Mm -hmm. You know, keep your grass looking you know, decent. You know, we'll be mm -hmm. fair with everyone. But sure. just do the best I can to help us with it. Well, I really think this is a position that was needed in our city and one that, uh, Josh, I, I think you've done a whole lot with very little you know, it's right. just kind of thrown into it and you know, read all this stuff. Right. You it was know, first ever uh, officer in it. So that's right. That's right. Well, Josh, I appreciate you being here with me today, and I know that you'll get out in the schools and talk to the kids, mm -hmm. and get on the streets and talk to the people, and right. help everybody to understand what this is all about. And uh, and I'm glad you came on Chamber Chat with me today. And for everybody out there, you know, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to find out what these ordinances are. We put that we put that uh, website for you up there. That's that's municode.com, and then you can click on Alabama, and then you click on Silicaga, and there they are. There they are. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks Next for time me. on Chamber Chat, I don't know what I'm going to have, but you know I'll be here. So tune in.